He goes, let me go get a piece of paper and write down your phone number before the mom left when she dropped him off. He goes into the kitchen, he comes back, he's been gone half a minute max. He comes back, she's kicked her shoes off, she's standing on our couch, and she's looking at this painting saying, oh my gosh, you have a soul. In. And he goes, yeah, look around, they're on every wall. She didn't know our last name. Her husband and his uncle ran the illustration house in New York City and had written one of the leading books on illustrative art. So the very next day, the dads had a play date that lasted about three and a half hours. The boys got together also, but they were, they were done after about two hours. But the dads talked about art for about three hours. And a few years later, the dad called us and he was doing an estate sale and he had gotten notified that this person had a, cam a cabin in Colorado and he walked in and this man had a whole room of art just stacked on the floor leaning up against the wall and it were a few solons and so we got this one which is called the copper mask there it is in print Saturday Evening Post, 1930. Um, so those were, just hold on, David. So then the other re thing that really triggered Henry's career was in 1926, um, Curtis Publishing that ran Saturday Evening Post and Ladies Home Journal uh, asked Henry, Harry Fosdick, who's here with his wife in this picture, to go to Palestine and to do the uh, remapping of essentially Moses's exit um, through Palestine. And he selected Henry to be the artist in residence for this trip. So they spent several months over in Palestine, traveling by car and camel and train or however and um henry did artwork and took a lot of photographs they wrote a book the only art in the book is a map but then from december of 26 through 1927 there was an article called a pilgrimage to palestine every month in ladies home journal and he did all the artwork for that so I have tried to read this book a few times. I have not gotten through the whole, the whole part of it. But um, in one article, they said they spent two weeks on camels. There was another article I saw said they were actually on camels for four weeks. But their entourage on the camels were five travelers, 35 camels, and 34 Arabs to carry tents, provisions, and water. And this is a quote from the book. Swift dromedaries are not to be had in Sinai. Only the slow pacing pack animal making his two and a half, three, what is two and a half to three miles an hour. The lazy tread of the patient beast is strange at first, then worse than strange, a torturing experience which twists every muscle askew. But, but at last, when one has accommodated his sea legs to the ship of the desert, it becomes a congenial swinging gait the recollection of which makes one eager to try again. Nevertheless, one does not blame the Arabs for saying that when God had all other man animals complete, he made camels from the scraps. So um, the year end report by, for Curtis employees, Curtis publishing employees had this summation also. The adventure went something like this. The artist and Mr. Fostick were in Tripoli. They decided to reach Baalbek, a town famous for some of the most perfect ruin, nor, Roman ruins in the world. The road lay over a range of mountains infested with warlike tribes, hostile to the French in particular, and Europeans in general. It was essentially for safety that they reached Baalbek by nightfall. Slowly, their car wheezed its way up the steep mountain pass. 
Often there were sheer drops of hundreds of feet at the roadside. Within a few yards from the summit, the car began to cough and sputter in a most distressing fashion. It gasped. The driver reached frantically for the choke and raised a silent prayer to heaven. Failing to climb those last few feet to the summit meant that the travelers were, uh, were stranded for the night in the heart of mountains infested with hostile tribes. Once more, the car cough died completely, but the front wheels were on the summit. They could at least go downhill, so down they coasted till they drew up at the door of a small American mission. By then, it was too late to go on to Balbec. Writer and artist were disappointed, but they were safe. The next morning, the party again climbed into the dilapidated auto, thinking their troubles over at last, but they reckoned without a roving party of Drew's horsemen. Nearing the town of Baalbek, Solon noticed large caravans of people hurrying in the opposite direction. Entire families with all their worldly possessions piled high on crude peasant conveyances, cast furtive glances behind them. Solon mentioned his fears in a low voice to Dr. Fosdick. He feared to frighten Mrs. Fosdick, who accompanied her husband. And then the outskirts, dead men lay in the streets, the houses were almost deserted, what few people remained were preparing for flight. The party pressed on to the hotel where they had written for accommodations, only to find it as empty as the rest of the town. The windows of the building had been shattered by bullets. The furniture was broken. Every movable thing was smashed and blood marks were much in evidence. This was the building that the journal explorers had planned to make their home for the night. It had almost been destroyed the preceding evening by a party of Drew's horsemen out on a little jamboree against the French. The whole town had been ransacked and fired on in the space of a few hours, the attackers fleeing again to the hills, leaving their dead behind. Had it not been for the breakdown of the wheezy little motor, our party would have reached the hotel when the Drew's night fighters fired into the windows and destroyed the furnishings. This incident is told now as an amusing event of the trip. Not quite so amusing. So, he may not have had six children. He may have only had three or four by that time. So these are some of the pictures from the magazine. Um, look at this landscape if you can, because he took, number one, look at the colors, and this tower he took multiple pictures of, and he really tried knowing that a lot of people in the 20s were not going to be traveling to Palestine, he tried to be as historically accurate as he could. And there again is a picture from the 19th. This one's December of 26. He took this photograph. This is January of 27. This is the actual painting. And then there it is in the article. Sorry if you're getting glare from the overhead lights. Again, his use of color. This was Masada. Picture of the caravan heading out was the head of the article for the February article. And actually, I read one spot where I believe in this cage on the back of the camel, they had chickens and they got so dehydrated and hot that all the chickens died. So then they stopped, even though they, they served the chickens, <laughs> the Americans didn't eat them. This is a photograph of Sinai. And there's the painting. And then that's a photograph of the painting. This priest 
ended up being in the corner. Pretty good copy of that one. They spent some time staying in Bedouin tents, very striped tents. This is the Mosque of Omar. David's brother had that painting. And this was up to April of 27. This was the map that they used as the cover plate in the book of their travels. This is a priest holding up the Torah. Here's the painting he did of that. And there he is in the, in the article, which was May of 27. One of the gates into Jerusalem, translated into that painting. He took lots of pictures of stairs, kind of hard to see with the glare, but if you put the two of them together, that then became this painting, which is here in the article, which was September of 27. Then this was an overview, and this was the last article that we have a copy of. This is December of 27. So he used a lot of these pictures as a foundation to use for other things as well. He took this picture of the little boy, whoops, sorry. Uh, there we go. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. Little boy with the, with the jug and this street vendor. And they put them together and there was a cover of a street vendor serving two little children. That was September of 1929, Saturday Evening Post. The photograph had the flowers on the top of the um, cast being bells, but the, he made them into flowers. So that's the whole cover. Then if you look, remember the skyline in the first picture, that was used as the background for Demons of the Sand, August 31st, 1929, Saturday Evening Post. And then this was 1936, and look at the skyline in the background of that painting. It was also very much indicative of the Palestine trip. In 1956, National Geographic did a follow-up of what was happening in the Middle East, and they selected Henry to do the artwork for that article based on his use of color and what he had done previously. So there's one picture, there's another. And another. And they did a follow up to that called The Last Thousand Years Before Christ in 1960. And again, approached Henry to do the artwork for that. And if you look closely, he still has very muscular men, broad shouldered. This one might be a little easier to see. Very muscular shoulders. Okay, now we're doing 
much time. Not bad. This is a preliminary sketch of a picture of George Washington that he used, he actually made into a mural. Um, and it was hung in Valley Forge Hospital. It was, the original was, is seven feet by 15 feet. So it's this massive mural. It was held, um, as I said, Valley Forge Hospital. He did, it was there from 1944 to 1950, at which point the hospital closed. Uh, by that time, Henry was teaching at the University of Maryland at their art department. So they loaned it to the university for a few years. And then the hospital reopened. So it got moved back to Valley Forge Hospital. Um, and hospital has since been closed, but there's a Freedom Foundation there now, and it is supposedly somewhere at the Freedom Foundation. Just one other little picture here that I think was done. His wife was the model for that. This was Ladies Home Journal 1924, and it's just a little sketch in the, in the middle of the article. Just to give you a snapshot of some of the covers that he did. This is Country Gentleman, 1913. March of 1913, Saturday Evening Post. Country Gentleman, March of 1916. Sorry if you're getting glare from the plastic. July of 1917, Sarah Union Post. Dave and I found this place in Nashville called Decades, years about 25 years ago. And uh, we went down there and they had, it was a vintage shop, but they had also bought collections of magazines. And we found about 600 pages of printed photographs of his grandfather's work in three days. Um, between us, we logged 52 hours in their warehouse, cutting up magazine. But looking at Saturday Evening Post in the, in the teens, it was a weekly magazine that the front article tended to be news and then the, the women's articles, the stories were later on. Um, that was before they would do these covers. And so in 1915, I saw a headline saying Mussolini is so visionary. And by 1970, it was Mussolini's a tyrant. How do we get rid of him? So it was interesting to watch history change. And then shortly after that, they split and started doing the covers. This is a Collier's magazine from 1922. Blue Book, 1934. Post Cover, 1936. Country Gentleman, again. Dance scene, barn dance. David's aunt posed for the center. Country Gentleman, 1940, December. This is a little Telephone News, just a little magazine, also a December issue.
January of 44, Country Gentleman, another winter scene. October of 44, Country Gentleman, horse auction. December of 45, another bunch of people out caroling in the snow. There was one article that sent, Henry said, you shouldn't really just copy a photograph. So he had these two photographs, one that had a wagon and one a house on a lane and he put them together and did that painting let me try to get away from some of the light glare so he ended up still having the lane moving the wagon to the same side as the house but he said what you use the photograph for is to really study the framework of the wagon and understand the mechanics and not just direct copy for copying sake. So uh, generally we've seen it written that he did approximately 2200 paintings in his career, um, approximately 50 magazine covers. We didn't want to bore you going through hundreds and hundreds of pictures, but we have about 12 portfolios of his work. Um, as well as a bunch of slides. So that, that was all I was going to show today just because I wasn't sure how much time I would ramble on and um, give you a snapshot of what, what our house looks like. It's kind of full of art everywhere you look. Um, one of the things I didn't talk about was when he went to Palestine, he did a lot of the pictures in pastels. And so he actually would make these frames and he would, he made his own pastel so he had the colors he wanted and he would glue very fine sandpaper to cardboard and then make this very narrow cardboard edge. And that way he, he could stack them on top and, the, and the, they wouldn't rub together because the frame kept them apart. And he could do several, he had several hundred of these in his suitcase um, so that he could do art kind of on the fly. And then we have all these little tiny sketches of variety of things that he's done over the years. So these were all happened to be from Sinai. Um, but we have boxes and boxes of sketches also. So I'm gonna not look at the gallery view. I want you, to, uh, Kathleen, I want you to look at everybody's nod and okay. see we when, when we open me? up again mm -hmm, when we open up again Kathleen and I have offered or discussed possibly having our portfolios available and some of the smaller pieces available for people to see yes. so nod nod to Kathleen if you think that you would like to see this stuff yourself or or not so what our idea was is that after we get through COVID and we all can start meeting again, we'll do a gallery where you can come through and see all this. If you're in agreement, just give me a thumbs up on that one. Would that be cool to see? I love the Saturday evening post. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. I love that. I love the Saturday evening post. I feel like you guys always never cease to amaze me. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. That's okay. Your no, that's really, I was kind of to the end. Did anybody have okay. any questions? Let me unmute everybody real cute, real cute, real quick. Okay, everybody is unmuted. So, except for Dick Mitchell, I don't know why you're still muted, Dick. Let me unmute. I, I Kathleen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I have well, a question. Yes. Ask Leslie, have you had all of this appraised? This is unbelievable yeah. what you have. We had an appraisal done about um, 
Oh, 15 years ago. Hmm. And we have, we have sold some stuff and we've acquired some others through family transition. Um, at that time, it was about $200,000. Oh my, I thought it'd be much more than that. Hmm. Well, these are invaluable. <laughs> they are, but it Less different Yes. Are there, uh, have you had prints made of those at any time? Um, no, and because you get into copyright laws, since, since most of this were do was done for Curtis Publishing. Um, mm -hmm. There's two, two covers I, I didn't talk about. Henry, you know, the art of illustration is interesting in that a lot of publishers think that if you've done a piece of art for them, then they keep the rights to the work. Um, and so de um, Henry did this cover for Ladies Home Journal, December of 1922. And Curtis Publishing said it was the greatest cover they ever had because it's a painting of the Madonna in the center, but then the side are 12 additional paintings and these were done in bas relief. So they were done in three dimensions. And um, mm -hmm. the editor thought that it belonged to him. So not only did he take it, but he cut the side paintings off and <laughs> gifted them out. Henry, needless to say, was not real happy about that. Mm -hmm. And he made him give him, get them all back and put it back together. And this is now actually hanging at the chapel at Valley Forge. Um, he gifted it there and they're supposedly having it permanently on display, but the chapel isn't any, any, in these days, it's not open all the time, but it is there. It is there. Um, but we, we have not gone through getting uh, copyright rights um, so that we could print them. He did a few Christmas cards of some of them when he was alive. Um, and some of you may recall seeing this. We had this um, white plaster on display in the atrium a few Christmases when we first came. This is what it looked like in color. This was the Ladies Home Journal in 1938. And he actually did a plaster mold of this. So it's three dimensional. And the original is hanging in the vestibule of the church that they ha that they belong to in Charlestown, Pennsylvania. The last time we were up there for Dave's um, aunt's funeral, I talked to the minister and he goes, yeah, see that front angel? He said, when I first came here, this man approached me and he said, see those butt cheeks? That was me. He was six years old when he modeled for that <laughs> angel. And he was so proud that his butt was on display for everybody that came to the church. <laughs> but, um, you know, by that time he was probably late seventies, early eighties or something by that time. But anyway, um, so that is at, um, in Charlestown. Any other questions? Nobody? Everybody's oh, unmuted. Yeah. You... Yes, Wanda. It, has Dave done some paintings that you have on display? Yes. You want to see his stuff? I would love to see it at some point. Yes. Okay. You want a real quick snapshot? Yeah. Don't look at the rooms. Just look at the painting. He did this. Oh, wow. Oh, that's neat. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Oh, I like that. Our kids have fought over this one because before I moved out here, when we dated for a while, then I moved out here, then he came and called me back. So he did this before I left the first time. Then he gave it to me as a reconciliation gift. <laughs> uh oh. 
Oh, and he did that. He did that. Where? Can we put the large uh, scale picture back on Leslie's? Is Kathleen still there? Yes. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. What did you say? I'm listening. I didn't. I thought she was asking. They asked, they asked to put the large picture back. You do that yourself. You have to push it to um, switch to action speaker. Sorry, I'm multitasking. I was writing e an email to Dawn. No problem. And then he did that. Oh, that's that is great. Good. If you want to see that large, just switch to active actor and you'll see it big. That's amazing. I'm floored by all this, by the way. <laughs> Me too. It's phenomenal. It's, it Thank really, you. It is so Thank cool you. to know that we know somebody that had something in Saturday Evening Post. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I said, he did about 50 covers and at least 50 covers. Um, so we have one portfolio that's just covers. Wow. And his full name was? Henry John Solon. So if you Google Henry John or Henry Solon, you can see a lot out on the internet. Okay. I wonder if there's anything on YouTube. I'm going to look. Thank you, Leslie and Dave, for showing all of this. Mm -hmm. You're very welcome. Thanks for your interest. I'm looking at the, I'm looking up on YouTube. Let me see if I see anything on YouTube real quick. Norman Rockwell, it has a Norman Rockwell, but it doesn't talk about, I don't see anything. I'll have to look it up and see if I can find anything. You never know what you can find on YouTube. Excellent. There you go. Well, you guys, let's give Leslie a round of applause for taking the time. Hey. Leslie you. had to do a test call with me to do this, and then she had to turn around and organize everything so that she could go from picture to picture to be able to do this on an iPad. I am just totally floored. Like, Leslie, you had 21 people on board, and I'm just totally floored how many people are actually stepping up your game to work with electronics. That is a positive out of COVID. You guys are really stepping up your game. Like, Dick Mitchell, I'm sorry, Dick, but I videotaped you while I was watching Leslie of your palm tree, and I sent it to Dawn. <laughs> I was so excited about you. I mean, that's so fun because you're, you're experimenting <coughs> electronics, and you made all this feel like we were at the beach. <laughs> so funny. Y'all you know, see his palm tree blowing in the wind back there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dick, say something to us so everybody can see it in case they're on active speaker. Leslie's hiding me. Mm -hmm. No, she said, meant Dick. Dick, Mitchell, say hello. Hey, hello. hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hello. Well, you know, I go to school when I get to watch the picture. That is Where great. Are Where are you? you? Know, I challenge everybody. To practice with your virtual backgrounds and see which yes, one. That's what it can is. Everybody come on with a new virtual right. background next week. <laughs> you can learn how to do virtual backgrounds by going to YouTube and searching how to create a cool virtual background for Zoom. That's a challenge. Be careful what you search for, though. You Where is it? Yeah. Huh? First okay, day. if you want to change your virtual background on there, you will see more. Three dots for your iPad users. Oops, sorry, I went down. Hold on. For your iPad users, mine is in the top right hand. Top is that right for you guys? Right? Is that right yes. hand? Yes. Okay. yes. Top right hand corner. There's three dots. If you click the three dots, you will see a thing that where you can clap and give a. You can do a message, or you can do a virtual background. And you can change it up. Like me and Dick now, we is in outer space. Look at that. How cute. See it? Isn't that fun? <laughs> Who says we can't have fun with 
COVID. <laughs> and um, I actually went in and made this one that I was talking about earlier if you weren't on board. We're playing bingo on Tuesday. And if you play bingo, I had these bingo balls up last time. Uh, what? It looks like I'm playing bingo, huh? How do you don't like that? And I found out that you can actually, um, who was it? Uh, oh, who did he do? Um, Jim Amspaugh. When we went off one time, we found out that you can actually go on and you can actually, and I can't find it in this one, I, and I don't want to mess up my deal. Oh, you can share content. Like, I can do something like this. Um, oh, here. Let me share a website URL. Hold on. Tell who wears bifocals. Hold on, I'll share something with you. Let me look up a number. Hold on, I'm gonna share something with you. Is anybody in a, in a hurry to get somewhere? <laughs> You're fighting. I wanna, I'll show you, a, I'm gonna show you a fun video, okay? Okay, hold on. Virginia Mix. Hold on, I gotta find it here. YouTube, YouTube, dot, B-E, hold on, I'm getting it up here, okay, Y-D-H, hold on, D-M-H, hold on, be patient with me. Let's see if I can, let's see if it'll come up. Oh, it's an available bummer. Oh, hootie do. Okay, I'll stop sharing. But you can actually share like content on here. Let me see if I can do it this way. Hold on, don't hang up. Everybody stay right there a minute. Hold on, can y'all still hear me? I didn't lose you, right? Right, we can hear you. Okay, hold on. This is such a fun video. I don't know why I like it. Hold on. I gotta get the, I gotta copy the address. Copy. Okay, let's see if it works. Hold on. Okay, so I'm back now. Can y'all see me? Okay, so I'm gonna go to share a, a web. A, if you go up there, it's a share button actually on here and you can share a website URL. And I'm gonna share this one. Paste, share. Let's see if it comes up. Okay, this little girl, watch this. She swims with ducks. Can y'all see it? Not yet. yet. Not yet. It's not coming up? Not yet. Okay, hold on, let me see. Oh, it didn't work. Why? It's supposed to show you. I did it the other day. You may have to start it. I did start it. Let me try. No, but I mean, we may have to start it. Can you see anything or do you see everybody else? Oh. Black screen. It's just not coming up. It's not showing it, huh? Well, who do you do? Anyways, oh, well, are you there? Yes. I'll yeah. have to work on it. The bingo balls I got right now, and that's it. But supposedly you can share a URL, and then I can show it to you guys right on here. So I'll work on that, and maybe I'll share a video on the next Zoom call. Okay. Is that cool or what? <laughs> But you guys, I'm really happy that you guys all jumped on to hear Leslie. Thank you guys so, so much. I hope everybody has a great weekend. I'm actually gonna probably um, cut out here in just a little while. I stayed up late working on the video till almost 10.30 last night, working on the video for the pavilion. They did that parade up there. And so it's not up because we have to have special permission in order to post those. So I don't have permission on it yet, but I wanted to get it done before the weekend. And um, I have some stuff I have to do this afternoon. I, actually, I think I'm gonna go home and rest my broke toe too. <laughs> so <laughs> I did a lot of walking. I did Taco Tuesday, groceries, and Thirsty Thursday. And my foot's a little sore this afternoon, I just have to mm. say. So I love you guys. I hope you all have a great weekend. and um. I'm gonna sing my song and eventually you guys will learn how to do it too. Are you ready for me to sing? Right. Go for it. I know we're not together. We're together, together, together. together. I know oh, we're not together. We're together. It's I right. my germs <laughs> to be your germs. Your
And your germs could be my friends. My germs. I know we're not together, but it's best for now. Six thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Come up with your really cool Bye, idea. Gang. I'm gonna see some funny things out there. Let's make everybody smile in this. Uh, you. you can come up, use something in your home. Don't leave the campus to go get it. Okay, you gotta <laughs> use something in your home. Okay, that doesn't work. Thank you, gotta you be Linda. Use something in your own home. Thank I you, love Linda you guys. And Kathleen. Love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Happy uh, Mother's Day. Happy, Happy Mother's Day. Day. Happy Mother's Day. Bye. <laughs> I'm ending it. As my grandkids say, can I hang up on you now, Hamill? Yes. Great. Go ahead, Kathleen. You can hang up.